Welcome to our live training session here with our 2017 Camaro Z01. Now we're going to be learning how to calibrate and tune this vehicle using our MPVI2 HB Tuners cable and the VCM software suite from HB Tuners. So we're going to go through the calibration process from start to finish here across several training modules as we're going to go through um, creating the base map all the way through to the finish of doing the wide open throttle pulls on the chassis dyno. Now let's jump in, let's talk about some modifications that have been done to the vehicle before we head into creating the base map. Now we have in this particular vehicle a ported supercharger assembly. We also have an upgraded supercharger pulley. We should build about 12 to 13 pounds of boost with that upgraded pulley. Now we also have a rotofab big gulp intake that's substantially larger than the stock air box assembly to allow enough air into the supercharger so it produces more power. Now in addition to this, and one of the big changes we have going on here, is a cam motion drop-in max effort supercharger cam. This is going to be throwing off everything in our engine control module, including the torque modeling, so we have to go back in and fix all of that for the vehicle to run properly. Now in addition to these modifications, it also has Cook's long tube header and a cat back exhaust. We're going to be calibrating this on 93 octane. We're going to go through that process again from start to finish. Let's jump in now to our live training session so we can get started creating our base calibration file. Welcome to our live training session here with our 2017 Camaro ZL1. Now we just went over all the modifications that have been done to the vehicle. Let's jump into our VCM editor software so we can read the original file out of our engine control module and start to modify that based on the modifications that we have done here. So the first things first, I have my MPVI2 cable plugged into this vehicle, into the OBD2 port, and then I have that plugged into my laptop. So I'm ready to do a read on the vehicle. Now I've already licensed the vehicle ahead of time, so that's gonna be one step that I'm not gonna show here in the live training session. We've talked about how to license and the process for doing the licensing in our main training course. If you're unfamiliar with that, you can refer back to the main training course. So in this particular case, the car has been licensed already, but I'm going to read the original equivalent file out of here and we're gonna modify that to begin this process. This is always what you want to do. Even if the car has been tuned by another tuner, you want to save it as the original file as you go in and do the read process. Then you have that as a backup to go back to. So this is going to give you a way you can move backwards in your process. If you want to go and undo any changes you've made, this is essentially initializing everything and being able to put it back to stock. If you, if you have your original equivalent file like I have here, this engine control module hasn't been flashed before or tuned, um, I have the ability, if the car wants to get put back to stock, I can just put the stock file back in it and I don't have to worry about having any editing values or any kind of odd values in the calibration file that can cause odd running conditions in its stock format or condition. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go ahead and power on the vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on here. So we're going to wake up the engine control module and I'm going to go up here into the top here. I'm going to go ahead and just close anything that's open right now and I'm going to do the read vehicle option. We can see right now, right here, this little green arrow with the prom chip, that's going to be a read vehicle. This is going to allow me to read the original file out. So I have the car powered on, the car is the engine isn't running, so we're going to have the, the vehicle powered on, be able to do this process. And again, I am plugged into my MPVI2 cable, plugged into my laptop. So we're all ready to go to do the read. So I'm going to click here on the, a little icon. The screen's going to pop up, and I'm going to be able to go here and click this read option. Now when we do this, let's give it a second here, we're going to find that we have two control modules that we're reading. Now, this is a stick shift car, so it doesn't have a transmission control module, but we find the engine control module, that's what we're already working with here in this training series to be able to calibrate and tune. And we also have a CCM, chassis control module. This is allowing us, to, if we wanted to read this and license this particular uh, engine control module here, the chassis control module, this allows us to control the flapper valves on the exhaust. Um, this has us delete it, so I don't need to go in and worry about paying for another licensing fee to go in and actually write and change the chassis control module. What I'm going to do here is real quickly just click this to do not read and not even read it and include it in this process. So it's reading the engine control module first. Once it's completed that, then it would read the chassis control module. Again, I'm gonna skip that because I don't need to edit anything with it. So I'm going to leave that alone and allow this to uh, finish the read process. Now, if you have deleted the flapper valves in the exhaust with an aftermarket exhaust and you don't have any kind of bypass plugs that are essentially tricking the chassis control module from throwing a light saying that the flapper valves have a malfunction then you will need to license it and then you would need to go in and disable the associated check engine or DTCs with those flapper valves being deleted but in this case 
that has some kind of a bypass on it already. It all has some kind of a trick that's tricking the traction control module, thinking that the flapper valves are still functional, so I don't have to go through that process. I'm simply not going to pay the licensing fee. I think it's one or one credit, I believe, if, if, if I recall correctly, for the traction control module to be, to be licensed and read, and then we can write to it if we want to edit it. I don't need to do that. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to stop talking. We're going to allow this to finish reading. And as soon as it does, we'll save the file and we'll go through that process. And then we'll start to take a look at the next steps here in prepping our file based on the modifications that we have done. Okay, so we can see here the read process has been completed. We've skipped the chassis control module reading process, but we've read the engine control module. So it's going to prompt me up here to save this file here, this read file that we've done. And I'm going to go in here and create a new subfolder in my documents, HP tuners, logs, and tunes. This is where I'm storing all of my calibration files. So I'm going to go up here into new folder, and I'm going to go and call this EPA 2017 ZL1. So I have this project saved. And then we're going to go into that folder here, and we're going to save this, the actual file here. We're going to go ahead and save this as original. So I'm going to call this original. And this is going to allow me to have this as the original equivalent file because it hasn't been flashed or modified in any way in the engine control module. I can put this back to stock if I choose to do so. Or um, if I'm going in, let's say the vehicle's tune and you're reading another tuner's tune, you have that as original file that the car was running in a state. Maybe it was running poorly, but it was running. You have that as a reference point. So you can always put that back in. In this case, I like to save the original files whenever possible. Um, and, and, and keep them saved as original, not overwrite them, because if I take all the modifications off the car, it'll allow me to put the car back into its stock condition without having to worry about some kind of a table or setting not being quite right and causing running problems once the car is returned re return back to stock. So in this particular case here, I'm going to save this as original. I like to always make sure I do that. So let's go ahead and click Save. Now, Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.